Hey everyone, Otterlink here, and welcome back to Let's Play Xenogears. Last time, we visited the Church of Nissan and saw a portrait of Mother Sophia, the founder of the country. Ah! Young Master! Hey Mason, what are you up to? The people of Nissan were most generous to allow us to rent this house, so there will be no need to seek lodgings at the inn for a while. Also, Master Sigurd wishes a word with you regarding your next move, if you may. Alright, so where is Sig? The good Master Sigurd is waiting for you inside. Okay, thanks Mason. So we have heard that Ave is moving on Nissan soon, it sounds like. We heard from a soldier in the, uh... In the cathedral that sounds like Ave is making moves on the border, so that could be concerning. Especially since we just took Margie back. Whenever I come here, it always calms my heart. Anyway, young master, I want to work out what our plans from here on are. Alright. Before we do that, there is something I want to ask you. Me? Yeah. Sig, what's up with you and that Gebler officer? What's the connection between you and him? You know, you sure know a lot about Gebler for some reason. Alright, I'll tell you. Me and C10 here, we used to live in Solaris. Solaris? You mean, where Gebler's from? That's right. Solaris calls foreigners lambs. They're used as manual labor. Basically, it's slavery. Slavery? Is that where you met him? Yes, it was there. We worked for the Solaris government for a short while, but we learned to dislike their methods and escape the first chance we had. You were friends with these people. I met you when I was a kid and we've been together ever since then. So this would have had to have happened even before then. I probably wouldn't have understood this if I had heard it earlier, but... Why didn't you think I could deal with it now? Surely you could have told me about this. Especially when you had something to do with the people who are backing that shotgun, idiot! I wish you had told me sooner. There's nothing I can do about that now. But there's one thing I want you to believe. We left Solaris on our own will and for our own reasons. Now they've appeared before us, we can't just sit back and do nothing. If need be, I'll give my life to stop them. Alright, I understand. But can you elaborate a little more? So first of all, where is Solaris? What bugs me is this surface dwellers thing. It's as if Solaris is in another location, like up in the clouds or something? Yes, well... Etronong, the capital of the Solaris Empire, is located in the skies above. Solaris is separated from the land by dimensional distortion fields known as gates. Passing between the two requires special means of transportation, such as an airship. To get to Ave, we stood away on a regular flight to the surface. I came much later than Sigurd did, but I also escaped in the same way. So next up, what are lambs? That is the word Solarians use to indicate those who live on the Earth. As I said before, such surface dwellers or Earth dwellers are used for manual labor there. 
Manual labor could be doing anything from soldiers to administrative jobs. Solaris gathers its workforce from the land dwellers. Jobs are divided up by who's most suitable. Sometimes people are brainwashed. Brainwashed? I, when you, young master, was still an infant, I was used as a test subject. There was probably something they valued inside of me. You too, Doc? No. I was born in the lower city levels. It is not a complete secret, but I guess I am a Solarian. You see, you still need people to run a country. No matter how scientifically advanced you are, you have no support without people. Pure Solarians are rare. They would not even make up a quarter of Ave's total population. So they support their country by stealing sur uh, surface dwellers. Who is that man? His name is Kar. Karan Ramses. As you know, he's the Gebler commander. Ramses? We call him Kar. In Solaris, there's an officer training school called Yugend. He became the commander after leaving there. He is a lower level citizen, the same as me. However, with his amazing abilities, after graduating, he rose through the ranks with unparalleled speed. That man had one ideal to achieve a consol uh, consolidation of all of his colleagues. Even land dwellers, if they had talent, were brought into the army. So you two were picked by Ramses. No, we were not picked by him. We aligned ourselves with him. At that time, we agreed with him. At the time, Ramses was our hope. He had high ideals and wanted to change the system in Solaris. To us test subjects and lower level citizens, he was truly all that we wished for. A benefactor? Yes. Even I, a test subject, was changed by his ideals. And finally, why did you leave? So why was it that you wanted to flee from Solaris? We were placed in key military positions by Ramses. And thanks to that, we came to know the relationship between Solaris and the surface dwellers. The lambs, right? They weren't just using us lambs for slave labor. They also selected some of us, like me, to be used as subjects in experiments to refine their drugs. Drugs that change people's personalities to make them more aggressive and to draw out their latent abilities. They're using us as human guinea pigs to test their psychological alteration drugs. Human guinea pigs? Experimenting on humans? Metal Gear? You <sighs> Bart's doing the same thing. Don't lie to yourself. Yes, for example. Drive. That drug and all others like it are used by are used now, but are bright byproducts of human experimentation. However, the role of such experimental subjects was not limited to just that. This drive drug is something that anyone in the Solaris army can use? At least anyone in the Gebler forces who is sent to the surface. You're worried about her, huh? I saw some in her room. No. Anyway, using slaves as guinea pigs, how low are these guys? Well, they're using slaves, that should be your first clue. Damn. Alright, I think we get everything. Hmm, I think I get most of it. Old Mason? Go reserve the town hall for us. We'll finish talking there. I'm going outside to get some air. You got some secrets, Seatan. You too, Sigurd. But you left. You found out what was really going on and you left, and that's what matters. Alright, where did Bart go? There he is. You doing okay? I had no idea Sig had such a past. Are you still suspicious of Sigurd? Well, I mean, it was just so sudden. 
I kind of expected to hear something different, like that we are childhood rivals or something. But that's nothing compared to the story he just told us, is it? Hmm, so hearing his story has you confused because it was not so simple. There was a time when he was cooperating with one of Gabler's generals. Furthermore, behind Gabler was a country that you had never even heard of. Hey, what are you picking on me for? And haven't we heard of Solaris? I'm pretty sure they've been mentioned. No, I'm not picking on you or blaming anything on you. What I'm saying is this. If you think about how he feels, then you should see why he cannot talk, to, uh, talk about this with you till now. Looking at the activities of Solaris toward other countries and up till now, it has never gone beyond simply maintaining their own empire or self-preservation. And as you have seen, their military power is immense, so Sigurd was probably thinking ahead. First, he was probably concentrating on taking care of the problems here on the continent of Ignis. Once things were settled here, it would give him a stronger foundation to deal with Sol Solaris later, which is a much better plan than rushing straight into a war he knew we could not win. Quite logical, really. Sounds like you understand one another pretty well. Well, it is not like we are newly acquainted, is it? We had talked about a lot of things up until we decided to escape from Solaris. Speaking of that, why did you leave? That Ramses guy was supposed to be a Star of Hope or something, wasn't he? Yes, I certainly thought so at first. But then I realized his way of thinking really was not that much of a change from the previous system. Basically, the only difference was whether they stressed people's rank and class or their skill. The words had changed, but it was still no different from what Solaris itself had been doing until then. So they changed from a class-based system to a meritocracy, and still didn't fix the problem of leveling the playing field. Or, you know, fixing the slavery, what the fuck? He had no intention of bringing everyone a better way of life. He just wanted to change who was on top. In other words, he's an elitist. I don't think I like him much either. So, C-10, do you think I can beat Gebler? Why, are you planning on fighting them? As long as they're working with Shotgun, there's no way around it. The way things are going, I'm sure we'll have to fight them sooner or later. Hmm, I suppose so, but... Even if we were to defeat the Gebler forces here, there's still Solaris to deal with. If we are not careful, it is possible that we may get involved in a longer war than, with Sh than that with Shotgun. Do you, do you not agree that continuing the way we have been going is rather hard on everyone? I think it is time we try to get some help from a greater number of people. So defeating Shotgun's not going to get rid of the likes of Gebler. I know what you're trying to say. To vanquish Gebler, first gain thy throne, right? Hmm, you could put it that way. What do you mean, you could put it that way? But then again, maybe it is time I did something about that. So you want to retake the throne? Maybe that'll help. Maybe that can get... If you have the throne, you've got Ave's military on your side, and you can... Hmm, maybe make alliances with other countries? Wouldn't that be nice? Though, there is still the war with Kiss left to worry about. I went to the tool shop to borrow a table. The owner said if we need anything for the young master, just ask for it. I'm grateful. When I was a kid, I borrowed stuff from there and got in big trouble. Borrowed? What did you take? A toy boat. I think that's what it was. I put fireworks in it and let it float on the cathedral's lake. I always used to play navy. I'm not sure, but I think I pretended the lake was the open sea. I was the fleet com and I was the fleet commander. Anyway, forget those old stories. We should get started. First, Gebler is a big problem. Yes, Ramses is headed towards achieving his goals. That he is now the commander of Gebler is proof of that. A normal man could not progress so quickly through that country's organization. And now he's presently located here in Ignis. Frankly, the situation is not very favorable. We need to somehow find a weak spot and attack it with all our might. First, let's just concentrate on Shotgun. Once he's out of the way and Ave is safe again, we can think about how to deal with Gebler. 
With our present strength, we should be able to hold off the Royal Guard forces. The problem is how to deal with Gebler in the meantime. They'll most likely move at Shotgun's request, so they're not just going to sit, uh, sit by and watch quietly. May I have a look there, please? In short, we want Gebler to leave for a while, at least until we are able to take back the royal capital, Bloodavik. These are the Gebler units currently in Ave, correct? The Western Guards... The Royal Capital Defense Force... And units along the front line at the border with Kislev. There are three main groups. Each is made up of a mix of Gebler and Ave forces. Only two of these are very large. The Royal Capital's defense units and the Kislev border units. The Western Guard along Nissan's border are little more than a surveillance team. In order to recapture the Royal Capital, it will be necessary to draw these defense units away from Bledovic. We have some Kislev made gears, correct? Yeah, we captured some earlier. What if we use those gears to make a raid on the Western Guards? Here at the border with Nissan. I see. We'll draw them out by making it look like Kislev is invading Ave. But the problem is, will attacking the border guards be enough to set the center in motion? To be sure then, Nissan will just have to appear to align with Kislev. If they see it that way, they will certainly make a move. You're saying that you won't intend to use Nissan as bait? Doc! Shotgun is very sensitive to Nissan's and Kislev's actions. If Nissan starts moving, he'll probably leave it up to Gebler, but... Of course, I do not intend. To, uh, I do not wish to do that from the beginning. But looking at the situation, we have to be willing to go that far. Hmm. First, we infiltrate into the capital. To take out Shotgun, we'll have to meet up with our agents already in the city. We are forgetting one thing: the front line units along Kislev's border. The main strength of the Ave's fleet is the battleship uh, Kefeinzel. It's been in service since the reign of the last king. Because of its firepower, the whole unit is nicknamed the Invincible Fleet. If I recall yesterday's intelligence report said that the ship is near the border. Damn, that puts everything in jeopardy. Do not feel so down. I simply wanted you to see the current distribution of force in the area. Even in the worst case that they do come, it will not be a great, uh, such a great problem. What do you mean? I have some additional information about Ave's border fleet. The former Ave's supreme commander was transferred there. Not really transferred, more like demoted. His name is Vanderkaum. Vanderkaum? You don't mean the Vanderkaum that was in Jugend? The very same. Young one, he has not been able to adapt to the change in tactics particularly following the introduction of Gears. He's a man who will never stray from his dependence on large naval guns. You mean he's stubborn. He's all size and no real military power, an excellent target for pirates. Young Master, this is not going to be an act of piracy. Just kidding. Actually, the number of Gears assigned to the fleet seems to have been reduced. Even with that, how gallant of him to be so self-righteous. Is he that much of a musclehead? It'll be fun taunting him. Young master! I know, I know! Anyway, C-10, do you think he can strike out our gear forces? It's not a problem. Even with Vanderkaum, we have enough forces left to pull off the feint. However, it would not be wise to underestimate our opponents. 
Well, now that we know what we are up against, here's what we'll do. Apart from our main unit heading for Bledovic, we must keep the fleet at the Kisa border from returning to the capital. So you're suggesting we have another unit? A few effective soldiers to hold the enemy at bay. A small force is best. A small force? What if Faye leads a group of gears there? Me? Hold on now, there's no reason to involve you all in this. I'll do it. Yes, let me do it. When do we leave? Are you sure? We've come this far. Hey, we're friends to the end now. Speed is everything. We should do this as soon as possible. Alright, tomorrow. I am truly grateful. Faye, Sitan. Yeah. There's no way we can lose. No one will die in vain. Well put, young master. Good morning! What's with the long face? Not feeling well? Or are you feeling sad about saying goodbye? Or maybe you're just nervous? Shut up, stupid! Don't bug me! Hee <laughs> Well, it's almost time. Yeah, yeah. Is everyone ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready as I'll ever be. I'll be waiting here, so let me know when you're th through preparing. Now would be a good time to go stock up on gear parts. But I think we're already fully upgraded, so... Are you ready? Let's do it. Our comrades in Nissan will hit the Western Guard in Kislev uniforms as planned. We'll wait for the right moment, then head for the palace in Yggdrasil. Got it. But avoid any unnecessary deaths. This especially goes for the Ave troops, and also the people from Gettler. Yes, we understand. I guess I'm gonna raise some hell in my Veltal then. We're counting on you. Next time we meet, I won't be able to call you Bart or Young Master. Maybe? Your Majesty? Cut it out. Bart's fine. Great mother of Nissan. Hey! You know I hate that title. <laughs> well, we're out of here. Okay, good luck. Marguerite and Bartholomew. Seeing you two brings my hopes up. Long ago, before the Fatimas of Ave were called Fatima, the royal brothers and their wives oversaw many prosperous reigns or eras. I'm looking forward to the day when as, gr when as the great mother of the Nissan sect, you'll take your place on the throne as Bartholomew's wa- THEY ARE COUSINS! EXCUSE YOU! Maybe they're chosen family. That makes sense, actually, with them. What? Hey, hold on. I hate talking about queens and romance. Bar and I are best friends. Yeah, I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna go with their chosen family. So... Probably a little bit less of an issue. Heh, <laughs> marriage is the best friendship. Well, Marguerite, at the rate that you are maturing into a beautiful woman, I don't think Bart will be able to ignore you much longer. Stop it! You're embarrassing me! Also, this is a ridiculous conversation! Each squad of gears is to take off, in order from here to avoid being picked up. We'll meet at the Rockies by the border tomorrow at 1200. Got it? Okay. 
The time has finally come. I'm pumped! Though the warship is outdated, you're only going in as a small unit. It's going to be a tough fight, but you could change Evade's future. I'm counting on you. Leave it up to us, young master. We'll drag Vanderkamp's tail around and around. Right, son? Don't call me son, because you sure ain't my pops. Oh, shit, that's a good line. Huh? <laughs> well, young master, we promised to make something out of this battle. Faye, it's odd for me to say this since I'm the one who got you involved, but be careful, okay? You too. If anything happens to me, take care of Margie and them for me. Don't jinx yourself. It's not like you... But I'll take care of them. Don't worry. We're all gonna make it out of this just fine. No one's gonna die. Stop raising the goddamn death flags! Aren't you going to rest up a little? I... Uh, what? Well, gameplay? What's this? It's been so long! How are you doing, Mason? At long last, we are heading to Bloodivik tomorrow. Though he is the prince, our young master doesn't know the royal capital very well. I'd always felt that was an awful pity, but despite that, I tried my best to raise him as crown prince. However, looking back, I might have put too much of the burdens of kingship on him too early in life. And it might have been too much for a child with a future like his to handle. I must be the most terrible minder ever. My dear Lord Mason, I hardly think that he's that is right. The young one would have taken the burden off of himself had he not wanted to bear it any longer. He's a fine man now, far capable of handling any such burdens or pressures. And I believe you are the very ones who have given the, given him the strength to do so. Oh my good Dr. Uzuki. How may I be of service? I think we're good, actually. I hope I can be of such service again. We're gonna be fine, Mason. Everything's going to be fine. You just... Hang in there. We'll kick Shock on out. We'll retake the, uh, the, cra uh, the crown. Bart will be king. And everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be fine. Where the hell is Sig Where the hell is Sigurd and Bart? They're both missing! On the eve of retaking the capital, you just, they're both missing. Come on, where are they? Why such a glum face? Tomorrow's our first return to your castle in 12 years. Returning to the castle. After we get to the royal, uh, the royal palace back, I guess I'm going to be king. I'm not very suited for it, am I? You'll get used to it. Listen, Sig. Yes? I guess it really doesn't matter who the king is, does it? As long as it's a symbol of hope, right? It doesn't have to be me.
I was kidnapped by Solaris and brainwashed for use as a human guinea pig. But even they couldn't erase my desire to return home. Then I remembered you and Marguerite, not as royalty of our country, but as just normal children. I don't care about rebuilding a dynasty. I want to regain this kingdom because it belongs to you. Because it's your home. Because it's my home? Yes. For that, we must take Shotgun down tomorrow. Am I correct? Right, then let's do it. But first, I think you need to take a bath. A bath? You don't look like a king at all. You are facing the enemy's leader, so you must have a noble appearance. Hey, you just said it didn't matter whether I'm a king or not. That is that, this is this. That someone is waiting for you. That one thought all it took for you to regain yourself. You're a great man, Sigurd. He's out of control. Stop him. I don't care how. Just stop him. What's wrong? You look like you have just had a nightmare. It wasn't that same dream again, was it? No, it was nothing. Car. Peeping is not very becoming, you know. Heh, <laughs> I saw the boy that you were after fight in the tournament. I can tell right away, he resembles you greatly. Greatly. You use the influence of the Ministry to set you up with that man. I don't know what you are up to, but don't you dare think about plotting against me. You stay out of this. Oh, I see the news has already reached you. As usual, you're the first to hear about everything. But don't worry, I won't steal your prized possession. 
I'll cooperate. Besides, you and I go back a long way. Oh? What's up? No, for a moment I thought I caught some unnatural sounds. We're near the capital. It's probably just some kind of ship from there. But it's not from the surface. It's from under the sand. Under the sand? This is the only sand cruiser in all of Ave. We haven't heard anything about a new ship, even from the spies out of a na naval HQ. Franz, can you try again and confirm what it is? I can't catch it again. It could have been a sand whale. Young Master, I'm detecting an increase in use of the F-band. That's the Royal Capital's Defense Force's frequency. There, on the surface layer. I'm detecting sounds of anchors being weighed in and engines being activated. The Royal Capital's defense fleet must be departing. We also inter inter intercepted a transmission from the patrol at the border of Kislev. They're requesting immediate backup from the Royal Capital. Looks like we've really raised some hell at the border. Alright, we'll start. Ready the shuttle boats. When we land, hide the ship. Young Master, I have an awfully bad feeling about this. Do be very careful. It's alright, old Mason. What, this little girl's our commanding officer? She's said to be an elite, for, uh, elite from out of Yugend. She returned single-handedly from the Kislev infiltration operation. And empty-handedly, I hear. No souvenirs for the commander, huh? Yup, what a pretty face. She's not even the soldier type. You there, is that how you address a superior officer? Remember your rank. Oh, scary. We don't care much for rank, and we don't care much for rank either. But just because you're beautiful doesn't mean you have to be cocky. Ha! This jerk's just jealous. What? I'm much prettier. How could I be jealous? Ugh. It's the fuck boys. Hey, shut that perv up. He gives me the creeps. And that's how it is. So don't get in our way, Miss Lieutenant. Anyway, let's just get this thing moving. Can't tell what it can do just by looking at it. What kind of machine is this? I've never seen it before. It's a new model gear called Virge that's for officer's use only. It's said that people with normal mental power can't operate it. So, she's still a Yugen regardless of having no ability? Ha! Huh, this thing looks fun. Let's see what she can do!